Okay, so now that we are fully equipped with all the skills to be able to do differentiation on all types of different functions, all that's left to do now is apply it in a practical sense. Um, and differentiation comes up a lot in, in physics, in movement and motion. So we're going to start off by defining some of these terms. And distance, so distance is the total length traveled. So we'll do an example, the total length traveled. So for example, we have uh, my stick man here and he walks five meters in this direction and then he turns around and he walks three meters uh, backwards in uh, the opposite direction. Well, the total length that he has traveled is five meters plus three meters, which is eight meters. That's his total distance. So it doesn't matter what direction he walks in. It's just about how far he walks. And we call this a scalar quantity a scalar because it doesn't matter what direction he walks in. Okay, it's just about how far he walks. And displacement, displacement is the total length traveled, but it's from the origin. So the total length traveled, total length traveled from the origin. So if we do another example here, we have my stick man, and he's going to follow the same path. He's going to go five meters this way, and then he's going to turn around and come three meters back the other way. Well, the total distance that he's traveled from the origin, okay, so it's the amount that he's traveled from the origin, well, that's only two meters, okay? So he's gone five meters, but he's turned around and come three meters back. So it's five minus three, which is two meters. Okay, and this is a vector quantity because we have to state what direction he's traveled in. Okay, so if it was a rocket ship, you might be going up and down. If it's a person, he might be going left to right. Okay, but in this case, we can just say it is positive two meters. If he had gone to the left of the page, then conventionally that is considered the negative direction. Think about a Cartesian plane. Okay, and he would have gone at negative two meters. Now velocity, velocity is the rate of change, so it's the change of displacement or position. So the change in displacement or position with respect to time, okay, with respect to time. WRT, that's a common uh, abbreviation, means with respect to. So for example, we'll fill in the speed. The speed is the magnitude of the velocity. And you'll see, you'll see this in a minute. So the magnitude of the velocity. So if the velocity is minus three meters per second, okay, so they've, that means that they've gone three meters per second, but they've done it in a negative direction. So if, if it's a ball that's been thrown in the air, it's on its way back down. Okay, so it's come three meters per second in a negative direction. However, the speed, the speed, it doesn't matter what direction we travel in. The speed is just the magnitude of velocity. So the magnitude, we would write like this, minus three meters per second. And we put these two lines in, that means magnitude or the absolute value of, and that is three meters per second. So it's just a, it's the measurement of, of the speed. It doesn't matter the direction that they, they're traveling in. The acceleration, the acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time. And this is all gonna make more sense when we look at a little graph in a second. So we're gonna come over here, okay? And I might just highlight these terms um, in yellow here. And we're going to come over here and we're going to look at this graph. And this graph is going to be a displacement against time graph. So on the Y axis, we have displacement. And the tricky thing is that displacement is often represented by an X, but you'll often find it on the Y axis, okay? And on the X axis, we're going to have time, or T. And let's say that we have a particle that's following a curve that looks something like that, okay? Well, the velocity, we'll, we'll start off by finding the gradient, okay? So the gradient of this function is equal to the change in displacement, change in displacement with respect to the change in time. It's the change of the y-axis with respect to the change in the x-axis, so the displacement over time. Well, that change in x over change in t from high school physics and what, what we just learned over here that says velocity is the change in position or the change in displacement with respect to time, the gradient of this function now is the velocity. 
So we can say that the velocity is the change in displacement with respect to time. It's that derivative, okay? And that's where our differentiation is going to come into play. And the acceleration then, well, the acceleration is the change in velocity with respect to time. So it's going to be dv over dt. Or because v, we know that v is dx over dt, then the change in v with respect to time can also be written as the double derivative of the displacement and time um, function there. So let's come down to this function here and we're going to do uh, a few questions that sort of puts all of this into practice. And the important thing to remember is that velocity is dx over dt and acceleration is dv over dt. Okay, and remembering those terms of displacement, distance and speed as well. So let's have a look at this, this function. And this function says the displacement x is equal to some function of time. And that time is t to the power of four on top of four plus t to the power of three on top of three, take t squared plus one. Okay, and we're going to be asked to find out a few things about uh, this particle's motion, okay? What this particle's up to. So to start off with, if we are asked to find the initial displacement, that's a common question, the initial displacement. Initial is when, uh, just write this in, displacement. Initial means when t is equal to zero. Okay, so we know that the displacement is t to the power of 4 on 4 plus t to the power of 3 on 3, this function here. Okay, so when t is equal to 0, x of 0, that's 0 to the power of 4 on 4 plus 0 to the power of 3 on 3, take 0 squared plus 1, which is equal to 1. So the initial displacement when t is equal to 0, i.e. here, we've got t on the x-axis and displacement up on the y-axis there. The initial displacement when t is equal to zero gives us a value of one. So that matches our graph. Another common uh, question is to find the velocity in terms of time. So the velocity in terms of time. Well, we know that the velocity, the velocity function of time is the derivative of x with respect to time. So it's the change in the displacement with respect to time. So we just need to differentiate this function to find the velocity. So velocity is the derivative of displacement. So we get t to the power of 3 plus t squared take 2t. And that is the velocity in terms of time. So if we were asked to now, question 3, find the initial velocity. Well, the initial velocity when t is equal to 0. So v of 0 is equal to 0 cubed plus 0 squared, take two lots of 0, which is just 0. So initially, the uh, the, the the particle isn't moving. It, it has a velocity of 0, okay? And that makes sense because if we look up here at this, this function, initially, the derivative of the displacement, well, that's a critical point. The gradient at that point is equal to 0, so the velocity is 0. Okay, and if, if time in this case was seconds and displacement was meters, okay, then we put in the velocity is zero meters per second. Okay, now a, a couple of trickier questions now. Question four, trying to find when is the particle at rest? Particle at rest. At rest means that the velocity is equal to zero. So this implies that the velocity is equal to zero, that it's not moving. Well, we need to find when v of t, which we know is equal to t cubed plus t squared take 2t, and we want to know when that is equal to 0. So if we factorise the t out the front, t squared plus t take 2 is equal to 0, we can factorise those brackets in the middle there. t take 2, t plus 1, is that right? Negative 2, oh no, it's t plus 2, t minus 1. Okay, so t plus 2, t minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, using the null factor theorem, t is equal to 0, t is equal to minus 2, and t is equal to 1. And that makes sense, because if we look at all the critical points when the gradient is equal to 0, the velocity is equal to 0 on our graph, it's at negative 2, 0, and when uh, t is equal to 1. Okay, but of course, we can't have negative time. 
So that's an important thing to consider. We can't have negative times. So t equals minus 2, we are not going to worry about because we're not going to worry about negative time. So that's when the particle is at rest. And then question 5, what if we were asked to find the total distance travelled? Total distance travelled in the first, let's say, in the first two seconds. Well, if we look at our graph, this is the displacement, right? So we start here. We can't just work out the, the displacement from at, at when t is equal to 0 and just take it away from the displacement when t is equal to 2, right? Because that's just working out the distance travelled there. Okay, because we actually come all the way down here first, then get back up to here, and then we go up to that point. So we're forgetting about all of this part underneath here, which is really important. So we need to work out the displacement difference from every single turning point. So it starts here, the particle's at rest, Oop, the particle's at rest here, then it moves in a negative direction down to here, where it's at rest again, and then it starts moving in a different direction. So we have to take into account all of those changes in direction. And that's these points here that we found when the particle was at rest. So the displacement at zero, and the displacement at one, and then the displacement at two, because we're looking at the first two seconds. So let's take what our x is equal to, our original function here, and we're going to take that, oh, lost it, we're going to bring that down here, and we'll put that there. So x of zero, well that's zero to the power of four on four, plus zero to the power of three on three, take zero squared plus one, that is equal to one, one meter. At the point one, well, that is 1 to the power of 4 on 4, so 1 quarter, plus 1 third, take 1 plus 1. So this minus 1 plus 1 cancel out, and we get a quarter plus a third, so that's the same as 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths, 7 twelfths metres. And that 7 twelfths metres is approximately equal to 0 0.58 metres. And when x, uh, so when t is equal to 2, the displacement, 2 to the power of 4 on 4 is 16 on 4, which is 4, plus 8 over 3, take away 4, plus 1. So we end up with 8 over 3 plus 1, and that 8 over 3 plus 1 is the same as 11 over 3, which is approximately equal to 3.7 metres. Okay, and these answers here, they make sense, okay? Because if we look at our graph, when t is equal to zero, we're talking about this point here, which is uh, one meter, so that's a tick. When t is equal to one, we're saying 0 0.58 meters, and that's when t is one, 0 0.58. Yep, that's all right. And when t is equal to two, we're saying 3.7 meters, which is up here, just above the three. So that's good too. And what we need to do now is we need to find, so we, we found our critical points, and we found the displacement. So we need to work out the difference between the displacement here and here. And then we work out this part here. So it's about finding all the critical points in our time interval and then finding the, the, the distances traveled. So at zero, we've gone from one meter and we've come down to 0 0.58 meters. And then from time is one up to time is two, we've then climbed up to 3.7 meters. So the distance travelled here is going to be 1 minus 0 0.58, which is equal to 0 0.42 metres travelled in this first leg. In this second leg, that is equal to 3.7 metres take away 0 0.58 metres, because we've gone from 0 0.58 to 3.7, and that is 3.12 metres travelled. So the total distance travelled 0 0.42 metres plus 3.12 metres, which is 3.54 metres travelled. Okay, and the last bit that we're going to do is find the acceleration function uh, of this uh, displacement time function. So we worked out that the velocity was this part here. Well, we know that the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, so that's dv over dt. So we just differentiate this function here. We end up with 3t squared plus 2t take 2. 
So in this video, we've looked at the application of derivatives. We've worked out um, how to find velocity and acceleration off of displacement time graphs. Okay, and we've sorted out all these types of common questions that might come up. Working out initial displacements. Anything initial is when the time is equal to zero. Okay, working out the velocity in terms of time, initial velocity, again, the velocity when the time is equal to zero. Particle at rest means that the velocity of the function, uh, the, the velocity uh, of the particle has to be equal to zero. Okay, and total, dif uh, total distance travel, that's probably the trickiest part of all of this. And that's where we have to identify any critical points, any times when the velocity is uh, equal to zero. So we could be changing direction. Okay, and working out all the critical points within our time interval and working out the changes in displacement between all of those critical points. Okay, thank you.